Just like those brave American soldiers who landed in Sicily in 1943 and stormed the Normandy beaches in 1944, young Israeli men and women are fighting today for our freedom, for our civilization. The elites, the elites that rule our societies, our so-called leaders, have converted to the sick ideology and the sick philosophy a long time ago that all cultures are equal. Government leaders, judges, even some churches, trade unions, university, the media, all of them are blinded by the political correctness and have chosen the side of Islam. Well, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, all cultures are not equal. Our culture that is based on Christianity, Judaism and humanism is far better than the Islamic culture. And many politicians seem to believe that their job is not to defend democracy and freedom, but to help to make the transition into Sharia law as smooth as possible. Ladies and gentlemen, I am often asked whether I have any answers to the problems and what those might be. Well, let me tell you, I certainly have the answers, even though many people in Europe don't like them, at least from the political elite. Let me tell you and mention a few of them. Things that we have to do to stop the Islamization of the West. The first thing, indeed, is to stop the cultural relativism. I believe we need in our, all our constitution, we need an article that lays down that we have one dominant culture that is based on Judaism, Christianity and humanism. Second, we have to stop pretending that Islam is a religion. Islam is not a religion. Islam is a totalitarian ideology. Islam wants to rule every aspect of society and every part of any person's life. Therefore, Islam should not be compared with other religions like Christianity or Judaism or Buddhism, but Islam should be compared with other totalitarian ideologies like communism or fascism. And if we, if we would acknowledge the fact that Islam is not a religion but an ideology, it means also that the right to all these religious freedoms do not apply to Islam. Ladies and gentlemen, a very important thing to do, and I proposed it in the Dutch Parliament many, many times, is to stop the mass immigration from Muslim countries. And in order to preserve our own values, our own identity and our own culture, not one, not one person from Muslim countries should be allowed to emigrate to our societies anymore. Let us also be tough on those people who do not want to integrate. For people who are already in our societies and are from Muslim and Islamic um, um, background. Let me tell you to them that if they adhere to our values, to our constitutions, that they are welcome to stay and they are equal as anybody else since we have no hate to any person whatsoever. But as soon as they have an idea that they think about Sharia, that they think about Jihad, that they commit criminal acts, we tell them, we expel them, we tell them, there is the door, you have to leave our society. And I also believe that every member of a non-Western country that wants to come or already is in our societies should sign a legally binding contract of assimilation and pledge of allegiance to our societies. And ladies and gentlemen, we also have to stop 
the building of new mosques in our societies. Yes. And I believe we should not allow one brick for one mosque to be built in our Western society as long as no churches or no synagogues are being allowed in countries like Saudi Arabia. And we also have to close down the worst institution in our societies, at least in Europe, the fascist institution of Islamic schools. Ladies and gentlemen, schools where young children who should assimilate and become full members of our society are being raised with an ideology of hate, with an ideology of, of, of terror. We should close down all the Islamic schools. And as a last example, and maybe one of the most important examples, I think we have to get rid of our current weak leaders. We have no leaders anymore. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In short, we have to go on the offensive and we have to start fighting back. We must no longer allow ourselves to remain seated in our armchairs and get trampled over. If they bombard us with Sharia law, we will bombard them back with our human rights. If they, if they bombard us with our court cases, we will bombard them back with our court cases. We have, we have, ladies and gentlemen, finally we have to start fighting back and show that millions, that millions of people all over the world are sick and tired of it all and refuse to take any more. We must make it clear that millions of freedom-loving people are saying enough is enough. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we all have to struggle and indeed it is a struggle. After Fitna has been screened for the first time last year, there were many threats to economical boycotts to my country, the Netherlands. The beautiful Dutch flag was burned all over the Middle East. Indeed, I am myself being prosecuted by my own government in my own country. While countries as France and Jordan are also considering to prosecute me, I have been barred on the kind invitation of my friend and colleague, Lord Malcolm Pearson, to enter the United Kingdom. I will never be allowed to enter the, King of the, the Republic of Indonesia anymore. The most radical imam in the Netherlands is also demanding huge compensation and, um, and suing me. Uh, a parliamentary bill currently in my own country, the Netherlands, is drafted with the aim of protecting Islam for criticism. And on top of all this, and it's not only about me, a lot of people who criticize Islam get a lot of threats. Al-Qaeda is determined um, to kill me. Finally, finally, ladies and gentlemen, I have not forgotten those to whom we owe our liberties. Our liberties were bitterly fought for. American soldiers fought, bled and died. American soldiers fought, bled and died for European freedom. And ladies and gentlemen, American soldiers did not die for an Islamized Europe, they died for a free Europe. <laughs> Everything that we stand for has to be defended with all our might, our identity, our culture, our values, our democracy, our freedom, our civilization, 
Ladies and gentlemen, we owe it to our children and their children. We will never give in. We will never give up. We will never surrender. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.